at the same time, I think we've had some very disturbing lack of progress in some key areas. And the first one I want to mention is resident work hours. Um, the ACGME reduced the number of hours to 80, which of course ordinary lay people look at and say, wow. Uh, but as most of you know, it was widely violated. In fact, it was probably violated more than it was observed. Um, and uh, so then they reconvened and have, have uh, tightened up the regulations. In between, there was an Institute of Medicine uh, uh, task force on, on resident hours, and they came out, they reviewed all the evidence, uh, and they came out with some very clear recommendations. Unfortunately, the ACGME ignored them pretty much, uh, the important ones, and that was that the IOM said, based on a huge amount of excellent studies that have been done, that uh, no one, no house officer, no resident, should be, uh, should be allowed to work more than 16 hours at a time. Uh, the ACGME put it in for just interns, but not for all the rest of the residents. Uh, this, uh, I find, is, I think this is fascinating because there are a few things in patient safety where the evidence is more clear cut. The evidence is quite clear that when you're up all night, you make more errors, you make more serious errors, that you harm patients. The evidence is also clear that if you've been up all night, you're much more likely to be in an automobile accident driving home, and you're much more likely to die in an automobile. We have several residents die every year driving home after having been on all night. And yet, the resistance to this is incredibly entrenched. It, 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 you know, it, this is going over the top, but I like it over the top. It, it, <laughs> it, it kind of reminds me of the abortion argument. There's two sides, and they cannot find any common ground. The people like myself and Chuck Sizer and others who say, this is a no-brainer. You don't have people working and doing vital stuff when they've been up all night. And the people who are training doctors and surgeons, I was one once, I was on all night, up all night, all that sort of stuff. They say, if we, if we can't do this, we can't train doctors. And the two, the two parties cannot get together. I mean, we've been having this debate for eight years now. And it's not much closer to resolution. So I find it very, very disturbing. One little data item you should have. The European Union requirement for maximum work hours for physicians is 48 hours per week. 48 hours per week. Now you may think they don't train as good doctors as we do. But the evidence on the outcomes certainly doesn't support that. The evidence and the outcomes is the other way around. That on almost all health and medical ind indicators, we're below the European countries. In any case, they can do it in 48 hours. Don't tell me we couldn't do it on 16-hour uh, days. In any case, I think this is, a, this, is a, this is something that's going to continue to be a tussle. I wish I had a, a good, simple answer for it. I don't. I think what we've not done in education is also a travesty. In spite of all this information that's been out here now for 15 years, very few medical schools have meaningful patient safety, medical error education. They all, they all have something. They have a day or they have a program or whatever, and, and, and they pay lip service to it, but they don't really teach students the basics of er error theory, of systems theory, and most of all, they don't teach them the skills of teamwork and working together in collaboration and communication, which is what doctoring is all about. And medical schools are still, overall, still very much fixated on teaching science and personal excellence. There are exceptions. There are some, there are some very impressive exceptions. University of Illinois Chicago, some of the Florida schools and others. But in general, medical schools are way behind on this, and it's time for them to get, get off the stick. We had a, our very first roundtable at the Lucian Leaf Institute was on reforming medical education, where we made a lot of suggestions about this. How much they're being listened to, I can't speak to at the moment.